A restricted area of the Grand Canyon is said to contain pyramids and caves with hieroglyphics and Egyptian relics. Many people do not know about them because this information has been withheld from the public for nearly a hundred years by the federal government and the Smithsonian Institution. Although access to this area has been declared illegal, many so-called curious explorers have nevertheless attempted to penetrate it, resulting in arrests. The FBI now has armed agents guarding the entrance to the cave known as Kincaid's Cave. The airspace above the Temple of Isis, as the pyramid-like structure housing the cave is called, is limited. All Smithsonian reports related to the site have been censored, modified, canceled, or retracted. In this video, we will follow the trail of the lost history that was deliberately hidden from us, and not to protect a historical site, but because it will rewrite the history we have all been taught. The Grand Canyon has long been a source of intrigue and mystery. For centuries, people have speculated about the possibility of a hidden civilization beneath it. Theories range from an ancient Egyptian colony to a lost city of giants. It all began in the early 1900s when, after retiring from the Marine Corps, G.E. Kincaid began working for S.A. Jordan as an archaeologist. Jordan was sent to the Grand Canyon by the Smithsonian Institution to investigate information reported by John Wesley Powell. In fact, the first American explorer and archaeologist to search the Grand Canyon was Powell. He partnered with local resident Jacob Vernon Hamblin. Powell also makes amazing discoveries in the Grand Canyon, which we will look at in another video of ours. Kincaid was supposedly chosen because of his military training. Whether this was to ensure his and his companions' survival during the trek through the wilderness or to protect themselves from something else remains a mystery to this day. The explorer's journey started from the Colorado River through Utah's canyonlands to Yuma. During this trip, he comes across a mammoth chamber in the Grand Canyon. The entrance was 450 meters down the sheer wall of the canyon. It is a long main passage that leads to another chamber from which dozens of passages branch off like the spokes of a wheel. Several hundred rooms were discovered, accessed by corridors leading off the main passage. The finds include objects that are not known to have been typical of the local population and undoubtedly originate from the Orient. Military weapons and copper tools with edges as hard as steel indicate the high level of civilization that inhabited these caves. Kincaid described everything in detail to the famous newspaper, Arizona Gazette, which published an article about a great and wonderful underground Egyptian city hidden in the Grand Canyon on the front page. The story goes that while traveling on the Colorado River in a boat, about 42 miles upriver from El Tovar Crystal Canyon, he noticed spots in the sedimentary formation on the east wall, about 600 meters above the riverbed. There was no path there, and with great difficulty, he managed to reach the mouth of the cave. Examining the entrance to the rock, he noticed chisel marks on the inner wall. He remembers securing his gun and going inside. After a few hundred meters along the main corridor, he reached a crypt where he came across mummies. He shared that he collected several relics, which he sent to Washington with a detailed report on the discovery, after which more serious research was undertaken. It describes the main passage with a height of 3 meters and 70 centimeters. About 20 meters from the entrance are the first side branches, along which on both sides there are rows of rooms the size of ordinary living rooms. Passages are carved out or cut with precision, as if drawn by an engineer. About 100 meters from the entrance was what he called the cross hall. It was several hundred meters long and contained the idol or image of the people's god, seated cross-legged with a lotus or lily flower in each hand. It has not been established what religious worship the idol represented, but what was found most closely resembles the worship of the ancient people of Tibet. Surrounding this idol were smaller images, some beautiful, others with twisted necks and irregular shapes, possibly symbolizing good and evil. All this is carved out of hard rock, resembling marble. In the opposite corner of this hall, tools of all kinds made of copper were found. The inhabitants of this place undoubtedly knew the lost art of hardening this metal, which for centuries had been unsuccessfully sought. Vases, urns, and cups of copper and gold made with very artistic designs were also discovered. Ceramic works include enamelware. 
Another corridor leads to granaries, such as are found in Eastern temples. They are round in shape and made of something very hard like cement. In this cave, a gray metal was also discovered, the exact type of which has not been established. It resembles the familiar platinum. Mysterious hieroglyphs are written on all objects, walls, stone slabs, and above the doors. The engravings on the tablets most likely have something to do with the religion of the people. Similar hieroglyphs have been found in southern Arizona. Only two animals were found among the pictorial inscriptions. One is of prehistoric type. The tomb or crypt in which the mummies were found is one of the largest chambers, the walls sloping back at an angle of about 35 degrees. On them, mummies are arranged in tiers, each of which contains a separate carved shelf. At the beginning of each of them was a small bench on which copper cups and pieces of broken swords were found. Some of the mummies are covered in clay, but all are wrapped in black bandages. It is worth noting that all the mummies studied so far are male, and no children or women were buried here. This gives reason to believe that this outer part was most likely a barracks for the warriors. No animal bones, skins, clothing, or bedding were found. Many of the rooms were completely empty. One room, measuring about 12 by 200 meters, was in all probability the main dining room, as cooking utensils were found in it. What these people did for a living is unknown, although it is assumed that they went south in the winter and farmed in the valleys, returning north in the summer. There are conditions for up to 50,000 people to live comfortably in the caves. One theory is that today's Native American tribes found in Arizona are descendants of subjects or slaves of the people who inhabited this cave. Undoubtedly, many thousands of years before the Christian era, there lived people who had reached a high level of civilization. The timeline of human history is full of gaps. Kincaid said that Professor Jordan was very excited by the discoveries and believed that the find would prove to be of incalculable value in the field of archaeology. Kincaid also shares something very interesting that he has not mentioned until now. The whole underground installation gave a man with shaken nerves goosebumps. The constant thick darkness was downright unbearable, and their flashlights and candles only made the darkness even blacker. Their imaginations could revel in guesses and visions back through the ages until their minds spun giddily in space. There is also a remarkable Native American legend connected with this story. Among the Hopi Indians, it is said that their ancestors once lived in an underworld in the Grand Canyon until a discord arose between the good and the bad, the one-hearted and the two-hearted. Macheto, who was their leader, advised them to leave the underworld, but there was no way out. Then the chief caused a tree to grow and break through the roof of the underworld, and the people with one heart were able to leave. They settled by the Paisavai, the Red River, which is the Colorado, and raised grain and corn. They then sent a message to the Temple of the Sun, asking for a blessing of peace, goodwill, and rain for the people of one heart. However, the messenger never returned. Even today, in Hopi villages at sunset, old men of the tribe can be seen out on the roofs, looking up at the sun, waiting for the messenger. When he returns, their lands and ancient home will be restored to them, such as the tradition. This legend was taught by the artist W. E. Rollins during the one year he spent with the Hopi Indians. Discoveries in the Grand Canyon may shed further light on human evolution and prehistoric times. According to the account which Mr. Kincaid gave to the paper, the archaeologists of the Smithsonian Institution, which financed the expeditions, had made discoveries that proved almost conclusively that the race inhabiting this mysterious cave, hewn by human hands, was of Oriental origin probably from Egypt, whose roots go back to Ramses. If their theories are confirmed in the translation of the discovered tablets engraved with hieroglyphs, the mystery of the prehistoric peoples of North America, their ancient arts, who they were, and where they came from, will be solved. Egypt and the Nile, Arizona and Colorado would be connected by a chain of history stretching back through the ages that would amaze the wildest imagination. But the mystery doesn't end there. On the contrary, it is just getting started. Major newspapers such as the Arizona Gazette and the Phoenix Gazette published articles in 1909 around a majestic underground Egyptian city hidden in the Grand Canyon, and then nothing. 
there were no more articles, sequels, or information in other papers to talk about it. The information just seems to have disappeared. There is no record of Kincaid or Professor Jordan in the Smithsonian Department of Anthropology, nor are there any documents in the Smithsonian detailing the artifacts collected during the expedition. When asked directly about Kincaid's claims, a Smithsonian representative stated, The first thing I want to tell you before we continue is that no Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. I can also tell you that the Smithsonian Institution has never been involved in such excavations. But that doesn't seem entirely true, as after checking the Smithsonian Institution's website, we found a note about a carded biological specimen taken from the Kincaid Cave on October 18, 1942. So, after all, there are various studies going on there, and not since yesterday. It is also an interesting coincidence that Theodore Roosevelt had a special interest in the Grand Canyon area. He visited the modern Lake Powell and Grand Canyon area several times to explore it. In 1908, he declared the Grand Canyon a national monument, and in 1919, the Grand Canyon was given national park status. The area, home to landmarks such as the Pyramid of Cheops, the Temple of Buddha, the Temple of Manu, the Tower of Ra, the Temple of Horus, the Temple of Osiris, and the Temple of Shiva, all named after deities of Indian, Asian, and Egyptian origin, has limited access and it is heavily guarded by the government. It is kept off limits to tourists and visitors, and for access, if you are an amateur explorer, you will need a permit, but they are not issued. Even the sky above this area is restricted. If you ask the forester why the names of the above sites are the way they are, they will tell you that the first explorers were simply fascinated by the cultures and liked those names. The Smithsonian Institution has been defined as a world stronghold of conservatism, as well as the most extreme orthodox theories. Mainly funded by the U.S. government, its main task is to support the theory of the linear development of the human race. According to conspiracy theorists, the Institute went so far as to destroy artifacts to support this historical perspective. With this, it is as if the academic world in unison has imposed total censorship and disinformation regarding any new discoveries that could overturn accepted modern archaeological theories. Just as no one knew about the announcement published in the Corriere del Sera on September 15, 1992, it confirms the fact that the ancient Egyptians knew North and South America well. An incredible discovery made by scientists from the Institute of Anthropology and Human Genetics in Munich, Germany, has established the presence of hashish, nicotine, and cocaine in the bones, hair, and muscles of some Egyptian mummies. This confirms the theory of many independent researchers and that of the great Norwegian explorer, Thur Heverhall, that the Egyptians and Phoenicians were the first to cross the Atlantic Ocean and discover America. We hope that one day the truth will come out, and we too will be allowed to peer into this fiercely guarded area to touch the secrets of antiquity. Until then, we're left with research into unconfirmed information, guesswork, conundrums, and putting two and two together. Share your thoughts on this topic in a comment. Support us by subscribing to the channel and sharing this video